When you read the articles about what are the top things you need to see in law, along with the Mona Lisa, the glass pyramid is included as well. However, not like these places it received nowadays. The glass pyramid was under criticism before its establishment. Le Mans critic accused the government of turning the courtyard of the Louvre into an annex of Disneyland. Oh la la! Quelle horreur! Also, the Egyptian element gained severe objection. In a news article about this criticism, the journalist records words from Bertrand Monnet, a former chief architect for the Historical Monuments Commission. He mentions the Egyptian collection to emphasize that Egyptian culture is welcome, but it cannot gain as much power as Western culture do in Louvre. The Egyptian culture should be under Louvre's control, or it should be under France's control. From this perspective, Monet still considers the loaf as a symbol of France nationalism. However, in 1989, the glass pyramid was established, which shows loaf's ambition to be a new type of museum. So, what does Universal refers to in terms of museum? According to loaf's official website. Firstly, the Universal refers to an encyclopedia of worldwide artifacts and attracting visitors from all over the world. Then, based on Loeb's vocation, Loeb's Universal also refers to the situation where collections are medium of their own cultures, so that various cultures can be presented and understood well. So, how can Loeb become that kind of Universal? To figure it out, let's introduce the idea of contact zone. The idea of contact zone is firstly raised up by Mary Lou's Pratt to describe the place where different cultures have asymmetric exchange, which is firstly associated with colony or slavery. When it comes to museums, James Clifford, an interdisciplinary scholar, applied this term to discuss the role of museum in his paper "Museums as Contact Zones." At the beginning, he tells a story that linked communities. Were included in the discussion of the North West Coast Indian collection that would be exhibited by the Portland Museum of Art. Just like what this picture shows, instead of providing knowledge about these objects, they held a traditional ceremony where the crucial history of their livings being robbed by white Americans is told. That's how this application works. When those who knew the dominant culture well and the staff from museums usually are people from dominant culture. Can discuss the organization of the artifacts from subdominant culture. A contact zone is establishing. By means of that, the subdominant culture can be presented and understood well. That is what Loeb suggests by using universal. If Loeb can establish contact zones, then it can become the universal museum as it claims. Do you guys still remember the glass pyramid we discussed before? It not only shows Loeb's claim to be a universal museum. But also advocates the specific contact zone Loeb claims to establish. That is the classroom example provided by Mary Lou Pratt, which is a specific mode of contact zone. The course centered on Americas and the multiple cultural histories that have intersected here, which attracts a very diverse student body. Every single text they read stood in specific historical relationships to the students in the class, but the range and variety of historical relationships in play. Were enormous. To make an analogy, glass pyramid and low palace are in the same type of classroom. They talk about the general idea of architecture design and how these ideas apply in their cultures. But architecture just advocates claim whether low is universal is determined by its organization of artifacts. Then, does low organization fit in the classroom example? According to what low suggests. Through glass pyramid, to build a contact zone for artifacts, we need to find a topic or idea that artifacts from various cultures can share. For instance, the mythological paintings of Greek culture and Egyptian culture can be placed in the same exhibition room to show the general idea that ancient people in different cultures all believed the superpower of nature. However, when we look at the floor plan of Loeb, 
we will find that it is impossible, because the artifacts of the same culture will be exhibited in the same exhibition gallery. All we can say is, in Lowe, we have the classroom of Greek culture. We have the classroom of Egyptian culture, and so on. But we don't have a classroom for all cultures. Moreover, for most tourists, they only have several hours to see the three great ladies: the Venus, the Victory of Samothrace, and Mona Lisa. To make an analogy with the classroom example, most tourists are only in the classroom about Western culture. What's more, Low doesn't meet the assumption behind the classroom example. In that example, all students are on equal terms. However, in the case of Low, the collections from un-Western cultures still have inferior statuses. They are used by France to blow its own horn. That is to say, Low is not even a contact zoo. By claiming universal, Low just shows a new superiority. So, can we fulfill universalism in terms of museum? The answer is yes. But universalism cannot be achieved by love alone. It has to be fulfilled by all museums. If we use the classroom example to explain it, all museums can share the history from their own perspectives. For instance. When talking about the history where Egypt was invaded by France, Lowe can share the attitude from the dominant culture at that time, and the museums from Egypt can share the attitude from the subdominant culture. In that way, both cultures can be presented fully and understood well, which leads to the true universalism.